Good morning. And welcome to worship today. It's wonderful to have all of you here this morning. And a special welcome to any guests that we have joining us today. And a special welcome to Gage's family. Um, Gage will be baptized later in our service today. I um, want to highlight a few announcements before we begin our time of worship. Uh, Pastor Paul is with his family this weekend, so he won't be here this morning. Um, and, but I would like to introduce to you Peyton Jordahl. Um, so Peyton, he's in the back of the, the sanctuary. Peyton, why don't you wave to everyone? Peyton is actually from Purim and from Calvary, um, but we're so excited that he's going to be joining us for a few months in a part-time role here at Calvary, um, helping out with different children and youth ministries. Um, so Peyton is finishing up his master's degree at the U of M, and we're very excited that he's going to be with us uh, for the next few months. There is a little bit of biographical information um, that you can check out as an insert in your bulletin today. Lent is starting on Wednesday, March 6th, so you'll want to mark your calendars for our Ash Wednesday service. And as a reminder, on Sundays, our service is going to focus on this Living Lutheran Renewing Your Congregations book. Um, thanks to a generous donation, we're able to offer a copy of, of this book to everyone at no cost to you. Um, so if you haven't picked up your copy yet, you can do that on the table right outside the Fellowship Hall. Um, we send condolences to several families in the Calvary community. Uh, we send condolences to Pat Udelhoffen on the death of her sister, Gay. Uh, we send condolences to Sue Summers. Um, Sue Summers' mom, Patty, passed away this week. And then we also send condolences to Jeremy Kovash and his wife, Dee, and their sons, Jace, Maddox, and Evan. Um, Jeremy's mom, Lynn, uh, passed away on Thursday. Would you like to share about... Your ministry? You want me to do it? Okay. Uh, so we have a new prayer ministry that is starting here at Calvary on Wednesdays. Um, Wanda Cooperschmidt is taking the lead on this. So starting at 6.30 in the Matthias room, um, you'll have the opportunity uh, to join us in prayer. Um, and if you have any prayer requests or concerns, you can either let the church office or Wanda know. And there are more details in your bulletin. As I mentioned before, Lent is starting on March 6th, and for, um, I believe it's our fourth year, we're going to have our confirmation mentor meals. So we partner our confirmation students with caring adults within Calvary and give them the space to have meaningful conversations and develop relationships. Um, so be aware that that's about to kick off, and also I'm going to be looking for some mentors. So if you would like to build a relationship with a 7th, 8th, or ninth grader, um, would you let me know? And then just as a note, if you had a 7th or 8th grader last year, so this year's 8th or ninth grader, almost everybody said they want the same mentor as last year. So expect a phone call, and if you haven't gotten it yet, maybe reach out to your mentee as well. Um, and then just a note, I know that you were all notified via a letter this week, but I also did want to share with you all that I have accepted a call to serve as the pastor at Peace Lutheran Church in Fargo. Um, I cried at the first service. That means I don't have to cry at this service. Uh, so my call will be ending here at the end of March, and uh, as my choking up indicates, it is definitely bittersweet. Um, I'm sad to end my time here. I have very much valued the relationships and the ministry that we've had together. Um, but after four years of my family being spread out between three different cities and more than 70 miles apart, we're going to be six miles apart altogether throughout Fargo and Moorhead. Um, so Jackson and Layla are already there when they're with their mom. Um, Jacob recently accepted a call to our saviors in Moorhead. Um, so I will be here until the end of March, and um, I'm looking forward for a chance for some, some farewells and different ways to celebrate with you all. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you. I've really valued our ministry together. Oh, thank you. So with that, we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
you're able, please rise. Join with us together as we sing, Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let, our, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Scripture. Pam Hansen, I have you as our scripture reader for today. Thank you. Okay. 
The Old Testament lesson from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson is from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20, a reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. It's time for the children's message, so kids are invited forward at this time. How are you kids doing this morning? Good. Was it nice to have a break from school on Friday? Yeah, good. You have, a, you have school off tomorrow with the kids in Purim. They have to go to school tomorrow. Yeah. So I was listening to what Pam had, was reading to us from the book of Jeremiah, and it had me thinking about plants. So the, the scripture reading talked about when we are like trees. So I am wondering if you all could think with me for a little bit, what are some of the things that plants need in order to go, grow nice and strong? Yeah, what do they need? Water. They need water, yep. What do you think, Drew? Sunshine, yeah. What do you think plants need to grow? Seeds? Yeah, you need seeds to grow the plants, yeah. What do you think, Layla? Roots. Yes, roots. Can you tell Layla was at the first service? <laughs> So roots are very important for the plants to grow because that's how plants are able to absorb their nutrition and get nourishment out of the soil. And so they also need healthy soil to be in too. And so we hear in the book of Jeremiah that when we trust in God, we're kind of like trees that are planted with deep roots. And with deep roots, we know that we're able to get good nourishment. So we're able to get water, and we're able to get nourishment from the soil. But are you actually a tree? No. Nope, we're humans and not trees. Yeah, and so I know metaphors can be kind of tricky. And so even though it says we're like trees... What that means is that there are lots of different ways that God is at work in our lives and in the lives of people around us. And one of the neat ways that we get to see God at work is going to happen later on in the service. So after the sermon, we'll sing a song together, and then baby Gage and his mom and dad and some of his uncles are going to come up, and we'll all stand around the font here, and Gage is going to be baptized, which is a sign that God loves Gage always and forever, and that Gage is a child of God. So that's a really neat way that we can see that God is at work in our lives. So will you pray with me by repeating after me? Dear God, 
Thank you for giving us deep roots as a way to know we are loved. May we feel your love and may we share it with everyone we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, kids, thanks for coming up this morning. You can head back to your seats. And will the congregation please rise for our gospel refrain? morning's gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel of Luke chapter 6 verses 17 through 26. Jesus came down with the 12 and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For this is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So the Beatitudes, which are part of Jesus' discourse, known as the Sermon on the Mount, from Matthew's Gospel, are perhaps some of the most well-known verses from all four Gospel accounts. And since, you know, I like to look at the roots and the meaning of words, the etymology of beatitudes are from French and Latin words that mean a state of blessedness. So beatitudes are blessings. So for many, the well-known beloved beatitudes, these blessings from Matthew, elicit a warm, comforting feeling. And so as today's gospel from Luke begins with similar beatitudes, we might begin to try to settle in expecting those eight familiar blessings. But we no sooner begin and relax and then it's all turned upside down on our heads. Jesus says, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, and woe to you who are laughing now, and woe to you when all speak well of you. So what in the world is going on here? How do we make sense of first these blessings and then these woes? If Jesus is God in the flesh, if Jesus is the one who ushers in the kingdom of God, and if God is a God of love, and creation and grace, then how do we make sense of the woes that Jesus delivers? Now I think we can kind of begin to make sense of this all when we look at what it means to be blessed and to look at what it means according to what Jesus says it means, not just how it's often casually used in conversation today. Because think about it, we've all heard it. Something good happens to someone and they say, we are so blessed. So it's always used, typically, casually, when something good happens. Which then 
inadvertently holds the mirror true, that if a state of blessing is when something good happens, that unintentionally means that if you're struggling or facing some sort of hardship, that you are not blessed. And we know that's not the case, but then what does it mean to be blessed? So as we hear in Scripture, the word blessing, blessed, as Jesus uses it, refers to being aware that you have a place in the kingdom of God. That you have a place in the kingdom of God. So to be blessed does not mean that there's an absence of struggle, but to be blessed is to live through opposition, through hardship and struggle, aware that that is temporary and God's kingdom is forever. Now I think we can kind of see a parallel to this if we think about what it means to be hungry. So to be hungry is to have like discomfort or weakness from a lack of food, but it's also accompanied by having a desire to eat. So to be hungry, to be truly hungry, tells us two things. First, that there's something lacking. And second, that it's something outside of ourselves that will satisfy us. Right? It's outside of us. You can't meditate away your hunger. You can't find it within yourself somehow to end your hunger. Your hunger uh, leads you to look outside of yourself for something. Nourishing, healthy food to be satisfied and filled. So when Jesus proclaims woe to the full, he is proclaiming woe to those who feel they can do it on their own. Woe to those who feel that their satisfaction, their fullness, is the result of their own doing. Because when they become hungry, they may not realize that it's only something outside of themselves that will bring satisfaction and fulfillment. So blessings are things that bring us into relationship. They bring us into relationship with God, which automatically brings us into relationship with others. So blessings are something that take up your whole life. And a blessing will remove you from the center, remove you from believing that you can be self-sufficient, you can do it all on your own. And then it puts God and the relationships with God and each other at the center. And Jesus is saying that at the, at the root of discipleship, I mean, that's what it is. It's being a blessing and sharing that blessing. This is the way of being a person who lives in God's kingdom. And so that had me thinking then about the beginning of this morning's gospel passage. So I think we're quick as we hear the blessings and the woes beginning to kind of overlook that beginning, those beginning verses. So I want to read them one more time. Jesus came down with them, the twelve disciples, and stood on a level place with a great crowd of disciples, so not just the twelve, but a great crowd of disciples, and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. So the crowds have been growing in number to be with Jesus. And we're told that there's a great crowd of disciples, but also a great crowd of people from all over. And it says, from Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, which is a way of saying both people in Israel and people in Israel from other nations. So not just the narrow scope of saving that some people might believe that Jesus came for. So people from all over came to hear the message of Jesus. And not just hear the message, but they wanted to be healed. So scripture tells us that power came out from Jesus and that people were healed. So it's important to notice that, uh, the words that Jesus spoke to them. So it's people seeking healing. And so what are the words that he gives to them? Well, it's words of healing. Healing through blessings, which is healing through relationships. So it er orients the kingdom of hearers, of, of discipleship, to know that it's a life of wholeness and healing. 
Now, as I shared with the kids during the children's message, this is the same promise that's spoken to us through the prophet Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. So there is healing. There are deep roots. There's renewal that comes from Jesus and from our life of discipleship. What a blessing for us. And what an invitation for us to be a blessing to everyone we meet. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Good and gracious God, help us to see the blessings of our life and the blessings of others, knowing that blessings move to us and then through us and bring us into relationship. Help us to grow in that relationship with you and to use it to affect all that we meet. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. As you're able, would you please rise? And join together with us as we sing, Blessed Are They. Blessed are they.
The congregation may be seated. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to, to the will of God. So parents and sponsors, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Gage baptized into Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with Gage among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scripture, and to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Gage may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. So McLean and Allison, do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith? If so, please say, we do. We do. And Chris and Jordan, do you promise to nurture Gage in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please say we do. And people of God, do you promise to support Gage and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, please say we do. We do. All right, Gage. <laughs> So all of you, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, please say, I renounce, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, let's put them over the font. Gage McLean Wiesner, I baptize you in the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yep, okay. yep you can dip them up. <laughs> You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Gage with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Gage, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Here, you can have that one. Do you want that one? Yeah, there you go. Let your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. 
Let us welcome Gage with one voice. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let's welcome the newest member of Calvary and of God's family, Gage. As members of God's household, I pray the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. As you're ready, I invite you to be seated and we'll continue with our offering. pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. 
Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. After he had given thanks, he gave it to all of them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for, for the remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The congregation may be seated, and those who are assisting with communion may come forward at this time. Please know that all are welcome today to join us in this meal. We'll gather either standing or kneeling around the rail, beginning at the center and moving out. We commune today by intinction, which means you'll hold the wafer and then dip it into either the wine or the grape juice. Uh, the grape juice is the lighter colored liquid. At the center of each tray, we have gluten-free wafers, and then on this side, we have a chalice that is reserved for gluten-free. Come, for all things are now ready. Just 
Will you please rise as you are able? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.